What started as a small wildfire on May 1st, 2016, quickly spiraled out of control and became an all-encompassing catastrophe. And the real kicker is that this fire season began early, which is very consistent with the predictions of climate change. Welcome to Watch Mojo News, the weekly series where we break down news stories that might be on your radar. Beyond that blockade, the fire is still burning inside and around the city. In this installment, we're counting down five facts you should know about the Fort McMurray wildfire. Number five, what is the Fort McMurray wildfire? In what's being described as one of Canada's worst disasters in recent history, the Fort McMurray wildfire began on May 1st, 2016 in the province of Alberta, before rapidly spreading to the north and the west, engulfing the entire city and some surrounding areas. More than 1,600 buildings have been destroyed, almost 90,000 people have been displaced, and some analysts predict that the blaze will rage on for weeks. Over 770 square miles have already been affected, but problem areas are still expected to grow. The inferno has been described as being, quote, the size of Mexico City, bigger than New York City, and far larger than Canada's Toronto. This has led Environment Canada to issue numerous air quality and visibility warnings, with the smoke from the wildfires covering such a great portion of North America that it can be seen from space. Number four, what caused the fire? The exact cause remains unknown at this moment, but while experts say the fire might have started naturally, it is more likely the accidental result of human actions. Professor of Wildland Fire at the University of Alberta, Mike Flanagan, points to two indicators that imply humans are at fault. One, the fire started in close proximity to the city, and two, there is a lack of lightning strike data. According to the National Fire Database, an average of 1,200 wildfires are reported in Alberta annually, and around 50% of those are man-made, usually unintentionally. Regardless of how the first fires in Fort McMurray came about, however, weather conditions in Western Canada have exacerbated the problem. The dry winter led to less snowpack, as well as lots of dry wood and leaves, which proved frighteningly easy to light. In addition, northern Alberta saw not only record-setting high temperatures in early May, but also particularly dry conditions, both of which meant ideal circumstances for the fire to burn longer. The weather forecast didn't bring too much hope either, although some rain did arrive on Sunday, May 8th. Number three, how big is the evacuation? Fort McMurray is under a mandatory evacuation order, and over 80,000 people have fled the city. While some 25,000 traveled northwards, the majority has headed south to Edmonton, Calgary, and other major towns. Syncrude, one of the world's largest producers of synthetic crude oil, has also had to evacuate around 1,500 workers from its Fort McMurray plant. As smoke from the disaster reached the site, and the threat of fires spreading continued. While the fires themselves had not directly caused any deaths, people have died while fleeing them. On Wednesday, May 4th, 2016, a traffic accident occurred between an SUV and a tractor trailer on Highway 881, one of Fort McMurray's main exit routes, and the incident resulted in two casualties. The fires are likely to lead to further evacuations as they rage on and continue to move east to neighboring province Saskatchewan, where several communities near the border, namely La Lush and Buffalo Narrows, are located. Number two, how have people helped the evacuees? Canadians uh, will and must uh, stand together to support our friends and neighbours uh, in this difficult time. The devastation inspired solidarity throughout Canada. In Edmonton, taxi drivers offered free cab rides, and the city opened up access to recreational centres. The airline WestJet was on hand to evacuate residents and animals, sometimes using airstrips at nearby oil fields. Local sports teams made sizable donations to the aid effort, while the Canadian Red Cross says it received in excess of $30 million as of May 6, 2016. This is a considerable amount, in light of the fact that the Canadian government promised to match all donations made to the organization. The government will also be matching individual charitable donations made to the Canadian Red Cross. Part of that figure came from a fundraising effort in Lac Mégantic, the Quebec town that was subject to a rail disaster in 2013. Local politician Luc Berthold said, quote, three years ago, our population was struck down by tragedy and all of Canada helped us. Now it's our turn to help this community. The Syrian refugee support group also pooled money in Calgary and set up online support groups for victims of the disaster. Number one, 
how much damage has been caused. We lost everything now. We all have what we have on our backs. The unrelenting fires rapidly reduced a city and the forests that surround it to ash and ruin. And analysts expect things to get worse before they get better. According to some predictions, the fires might not be extinguished for months. Insurance losses are expected to exceed $9 billion, while Canada's oil industry has also been badly hit, forcing the shutdown of about 25% of the nation's oil sands facilities. The closures and evacuations around Fort McMurray translate to a loss of up to 1 million barrels a day, with numerous local companies scaling back production and sending workers to safer locales. This has in turn led to instability in crude oil prices across the country. In short, the wildfires have become one of the most expensive natural disasters in Canadian history. Around 1,600 homes have reportedly been destroyed, but that number is expected to rise significantly when the fires are put out completely and the full extent of the damage becomes clear. At this point, while the fires continue to rage, it's difficult to imagine how Fort McMurray will rebuild. But residents remain defiant. Quote, I don't know what's left of it really, said one evacuee, but I know it will stand again. And with cooler temperatures and light rain in the forecast beginning Monday, May 9, 2016, and lasting a few days, the process has hopefully already begun. To those displaced, uh, please remember, we are resilient. We are Canadians, and we will make it through this most difficult time together. Did these facts get you thinking? The reality is the biggest factor is the weather. To vote for which news story is covered next, head over to watchmojo.com slash suggest. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more newsworthy top tens published every week. It's a tough day for Albertans, but we will persevere. Thank you, Mr. <laughs>